Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Bennett and it is the ramble and uh, here we are for the new year and uh, we will be here until midnight tonight Eastern time uh, and uh, uh, every now and then we get together with uh, with uh, with all well, the next wife and talk to her let's see what's happening let me see here I push the button but nothing happens here all right ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen there she is from Lake Oswego, the first of the year, ladies and gentlemen, for Ronnie Bennett. Hello, Ronnie. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year, and a Happy New Year to you, too. You you say you're a little tired today, and let's explain. Uh, she has a touch of the cancer. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> I have a touch of chemo fatigue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just exhausting, and I'm just hitting the beginning of it. It's going to hit me hard today. Really? Yeah. They giving yeah. they giving but they're giving you a heavy dose of it though, right? Is what's happening well, on here. Friday I had an all day session. Yeah. Yeah. And then for two days you wear a body pump at home to pump more into you. Uh -huh. And then I get two days free. This is the second time I've had this heavy chemo. And I get two days free when I just feel like a normal human being. Yeah. And so that was Sunday Monday. Two days, and I thought I was getting home free, and uh, and then and and even this morning, two emails I wrote to friends. Yeah. I said, "Wow, this I'll take this. I'm feeling just like a normal human being." Yeah. And then a couple of hours ago, it just hit me, boom, and it's going to get worse. I can feel it. Yeah, oh, boy. You know, it's it's a fatigue when it gets real when it gets hit the the at the worst. It's like I've never ever ever felt in my life. The I. The idea of, you know, you need to eat and you go to the kitchen and you look and you think, maybe I would like a scrambled egg. There isn't a chance you have that much energy to cook a scrambled egg. <laughs> really? Well. And what I did this time is load up on frozen meals because sticking something in the microwave is the best I can yeah, do. But you got to lift them. You have to lift them. Uh, put well, them uh, you know, I can manage that much, but it's hard. You're right. You well, know. you better be glad you don't have a cat now, because taking care of the cat would be a. an You know effort. what my biggest concern was? I mean, that my kitty died in spring. Mm -hmm. um, he was 14. But you know what my biggest concern was back then? Is that he was an ankle biter. And he really didn't like anybody but me much. And so when I die, who would ever take him? So it was kind of a blessing that he died of old age when he did. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm, I'm babysitting a cat here. Yes. Uh, we do it every now and then for our friend Jack Garfine and his lady Natalia. They're moving into a new place, so they didn't want to have the cat go through a whole bunch of stuff while they were moving. So Plus you might lose the cat in the move. You so know? <laughs> we got the cat for a couple of days, and then it's turned into a week, and we don't mind it because we, we love the cat. You know, outside of the fact that she's tearing up the furniture, which is not making us happy. But uh, she's, uh, uh, it's funny. We have a guest room. Uh, do you know where her favorite place is to sleep in the house? The no. guest room. Well, she's a guest. Uh, yeah, I know. That's, that's what's so precocious about it. <laughs> uh. You know, so, uh, but anyway, so, uh, uh you know, but taking care of an animal is, uh, you know, it's, 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 it, 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 they, when they want attention, they're going to get in your way, right? You know, uh, this cat is always craving attention. So you start walking down the hall and then she like flops down on her side, like pet me, you know. They're like that. They're okay. Yeah. But my, had good cats let, let me, my let me, life. let me ask you some questions here. Okay. Because uh, these are questions I get asked by, like, uh, oh, uh, my wife and by other people who know your story. 
uh, mm-hmm. people here on the on the on the uh, uh, on GabNet and so on. The the going through the chemo, mm-hmm. you know, you're 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 you've been given kind of a terminal notice, as it were. Well, know? not kind of. You have kind of a sell by date, you know. Uh, and but we don't know what that date is. We don't know it's, what that date it's, it's is. It's not far in the future, but it's not tomorrow afternoon either. Right, right. Uh, excuse me, I think I'm going to sneeze any minute here. Uh, I, for some reason, I don't know, you, uh, allergies are 24-7, 365 days a year now. I, you know, I'm blessed not to know anything about that. I've never had an allergy. Really? You remember me? No. Oh, I just, I was, I'm allergic to everything. Anyway, let me, uh, uh, so let me pose this to you. They, they, they say, well, you know, if I were told that I had terminal cancer uh, and they offered me chemo, I don't know if I would take it. Even though in your case it says, oh, it'll give you an extra eight months of life. Uh, so they're guessing at the time, but yeah. yes. Now none of them are dying. They're making this assumption. You know, none of them have been given any kind of a, uh, a, a determination like you got. Why have you decided on the chemo? Well, first of all, understand that one of the strangest things about my cancer mm-hmm. is that if they hadn't told me, I wouldn't know I have cancer. I have no symptoms of cancer. I have symptoms of chemo, but no cancer. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah. um, and <clears throat> if I did nothing, it would progress at a certain rate and I would die. But I feel, aside from the fatigue and a couple of, uh, I've, I've been yeah. lucky so far, yeah. very minor other side effects. Um, other than that, in between, which is still, you know, there's two weeks between chemo sessions. Mm-hmm. I would say I have 11, 10 and a half, 11 good normal days. Um, that doesn't count that my energy and stamina are less than they used to be before the cancer because the cancer went to one lung. And so breathing is difficult and so I don't have as much energy. It's not difficult. It just doesn't allow me to like run up the stairs anymore, <laughs> that yeah. sort of thing. Um, and I, I want... I want the time as long as I feel good. Why not? I mean, I, I wrote a thing this week about living, living with dying should should go together. And I'm still living a good life. Now, I said that, you know, I've got most of two weeks that I feel like a perfectly okay person. When that gets to be, if it gets to that I have out of the 14 days between... Yeah. When, if it gets to be 10, 11, 12, or even less than that, um, that I feel like I know I'm going to feel later today mm-hmm. when I really can't do much of anything but crawl to the microwave, um, then it would be time to stop and let the disease take its course, and I will do that at that time. Yeah. Uh, because but it, I still have yeah. very, very good life. Why shouldn't I have it? And I understand people who don't want to, and every person is different. Other people may have greater uh, effects from their cancer than I do yet anyway. And they would make a different choice. My mother, when they told her, she said, I don't want anything. Just <laughs> My mother was so funny. She just went to bed as soon as they told her. <laughs> Never got up again for three months until she died. But... Um, uh, everybody makes their own choice. It depends on how you feel, I think. Yeah, uh, because, uh, you know, I mean, people who, who have asked me this question are people not <coughs> facing that, you know, so they're only assuming what they would do if they were in that situation, but until you're in that situation, you don't know what you're going to do. I think that's true about the entire thing. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, I, I, I think before, before this ever happened to you, when you heard about people who were dying of cancer and, and they had a, but they they could take chemo. You probably said to yourself, I'd never do that. No, I didn't. I didn't make a choice then. Really? I had no way to know. Yeah. But and, and there is no way to know. Other people, different kinds of cancer cause different symptoms. 
and they can be terribly painful or debilitating in other ways. Then I see the point. If they're if you're if you can't live a normal life and chemo is going to extend your feeling that bad, why would you do it? You you know what's, um, you know what's very strange. I was talking to my friend Adrian at a party the other night, and her husband Steve, who was my best friend, died of cancer, died of lung cancer. And I was with him the night before he died at the hospital. And you wouldn't think I didn't think he was there to die. I thought he was there to just get whatever he needed to have done and then get sent home. The next day he was dead. And mm-hmm. and even she said it amazed her because she didn't expect it. It was like he was he was all spitting, yelling and screaming. He wanted out of the hospital. He didn't want to be there. But there was none of this. He didn't even. He was a heavy guy uh, in weight, and he hadn't lost that much weight as a result of the disease. I mean, you would not know he had cancer if you saw him the night before he died. Listen, there's there are moments that I have, as, as I said, aside from the effects of chemotherapy. Mm-hmm. There are moments that, when that's not affecting me, that I think, did they make a mistake? And that, that I don't know. I feel like, as I said, except I, I can't run upstairs anymore, fat. I feel perfectly fine. I mean, I will go through this period of a couple of days of extreme fatigue. I didn't know until this that any human being could feel this tired. Um, and that will last a couple of days, and then it will start to lift, and I'll be fine. But I, other than that, I don't know. Yeah. And and the charts, you know, they do blood tests and they do chest scans of me. And I can see, you know, they point out to me what's going on inside my body. But, hey, if they didn't tell me, I wouldn't know what they're pointing at was cancer either, you know. Yeah. I'm not an expert at that stuff. Um, so sometimes you sort of think, geez, did they make a mistake? No, they didn't. This is how my cancer is progressing for the moment. Who knows what's going to happen in time? Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. Well, you know, I I just wanted to ask that question because there, everybody says what they would do if faced with the situation. Well, I would never. And I, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, we're not in that situation. She is. So she has to determine what she wants and what's best for her. And if the if the chemo, uh, the effects of the chemo uh, are not. They're bad for a few days, but then the other part of the 14 days you've got, uh, you're in pretty good shape. Then, you know, I can see why there's a reason and to And in my going. case, it's not pretty good. It's very good yeah. the rest of the time. Yeah. And by the way, you're, you're kind of, you're if kind, I had... Yeah. Hmm? I was going to say, you're kind of spiffy right now. You're, you're kind of... Yeah, you're, I'm really <laughs> tired. <this morning. laughs> uh, and it's going to get worse today. But, uh, but think about this. If I, from the beginning, it's been 18, 19 months since I was first diagnosed and had the Whipple surgery. Yeah. If I hadn't done that, and listen, the recovery from something is a big deal, 12 hours of the Whipple surgery, there were, in the first month after it was done and the recovery, I swore I wish I had died. It was the most awful thing I have ever been through in my life, recovery from that. But now I'm fine. But, um... Think if I had, I had rejected that and chemotherapy, I would probably be dead by now, and I might never have met the son that I had fifty-five years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't know what life is going to bring your way, you know. So in this case, how lucky for me that I managed to get through the Whipple surgery, and I'm getting through chemo. And by the way, he had. He and his family live in California in the Napa Valley, and long before we found one another, they had planned to move to Oregon, Mm -hmm. and over the holidays, they found a home, and they made a bid. It was accepted. They got the loan, and before the end of this month, they will be moved in and live 30 minutes from me. Oh, wow. Isn't that great? Wow. Wow. Yeah. It would, have been, it would have been better had they moved and then you found out about him and then you yeah, found out he on, only Alex, lived 30 minutes from you. <laughs> you come know? on. Give it a break. <laughs> this is perfectly wonderful. Oh, but I good. might never have, that might never have happened if I hadn't suffered through the goddamn triple surgery. Yeah, well, now that now that you had that happen, where you, we mentioned this the last time that you went on Ancestry.com and one of the side effects of 
uh, ancestry is every now and then they send you something. It's not says, ancestry. It was another one. Let's another. not give them any extra publicity. Oh, okay. Well, I used ancestry. <laughs> And and they, they they match you up with people who are closer matches to you and and one came along and said what a hundred percent match or something like that. No, it was about fifty percent, which means in my case, what it was his that he saw at first, and they said it was near fifty percent, and that means mother. <laughs> that, <that's laughs> and, uh, um, but anyway, so so she she found. Uh, a son that she gave birth to <laughs> shortly after I met her, uh, shortly before I met her, uh, and uh, I remember it was it was it was playing heavily on your head at that time, you know, as it did with me when it happened to me, uh, and uh, to have that happen how many years ago? Uh, fifty five, almost fifty six. Fifty six years ago, and to have this son suddenly come into your life is especially considering what you're going through at this time is an absolute miracle just in time yeah i mean it's such a closure on a part of your life that you don't have to wonder what happened and for him and for i have a grandson a four-year-old cute little grandson <laughs> he made this mug for me yes yeah, yeah grandma <laughs> i didn't know i didn't think i'd ever be calling you grandma <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> Is it, isn't it interesting? This is funny, and I guess there's good reason for it. You had a kid that you gave away. I had a kid that was given away. All right. We both had we both had children, and since then we have never had children. And part of that, I think, is the fe with me was the fear of 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 uh, having a child by someone and then having them leave me and the child being once again taken away from me. So I just was always very careful not to get people pregnant, right? Uh, I did. I made a, a real choice. Um, you know, I'm not the motherly type. I never thought I was. I don't go all gooey over children. But um, when I was approaching 40, which is pretty much, I guess people do still have babies a little past 40 now. But when I was approaching 40... I thought, you know, am I going to be sorry if I don't have a kid? And I spent a full year thinking about it really hard. And um, I decided that, no, I wasn't all that excited about having a child. But if I loved somebody who really wanted a kid, I would do it once. And, well, he didn't turn up in time. <laughs> you <know>? Right. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, but, I mean, what we've, we've all done. Uh, is that in our cases, in both our cases, we decided not to have children. And I think it was somewhat as a result of that. If you had not had that kid, then I you might... I to that for yeah. me. You think you would have been that way anyway? You would have had that determination? I, I think you didn't exactly want. what I just described was me anyway. No. Oh, okay. But it wasn't toned by what happened in your life? Mm -hmm. because no. With me, it was. With me, it was. I mean, I came to the determination when I was like 50. The reason I've been so careful not to have kids is because of this distrust I have of having a woman who I would have a child by. Suddenly, we wouldn't get along any longer, and she couldn't still be a good friend, and I'd have this kid ripped away from me again. So I think... Vice so versa. Vice you know. versa, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I had this in my head that... And I suddenly came to that realization, and then I, it was a little late to go out and have a kid somewhere, you know. Well, it wasn't too late, but, you know, you have to find somebody who wants to have a kid. Well, know? there's that problem. So ultimately, I wound up with a woman who's never had any children, and I've never had any children. So we have nobody to take care of us in our old age. Well, they, you, you can't count on children to do that anyway. Yeah. My, you, there are all kinds of reasons they won't. But don't you also think that as you go through your life, if you don't have children, you probably don't hang out with people who have children? Mm, no. I, uh, well, I let me see. I'm, I'm trying to think about that. You know, you're right. <laughs> well, who can stand the little buggers if you're not well, used to them? My friend Steve and his and his <laughs> his wife Adrian. He died. They, they didn't have children. Uh, Marjorie and I haven't had children. Who else are we close to? Well, she does have a lot of friend, her friends who had children. 
you know. I have friends now who have grown children. I still think I'm 70, almost 78 years old. Yeah. And I still think it's weird to be old enough to have friends who have children who are grandparents. <laughs> you know, it just seems weird to me. Yeah. But but now that I'm a grandparent, maybe that will be different. But but now people I've met later in life have adult yeah. children. But people I know from much younger in my life, most almost all of them never had children that we didn't hang out with. And also, when, once you become a parent, you know, I, I used to describe it as back in our 30s and 40s when people had children, they went off to married people land, wherever that is, yeah. with their kids, and they they just weren't free to go out, you know, to dinner at night and all the kinds of things that we did because they had children to take care of. Well, I mean, I, I think about my career, and I think it would have gone differently had I had children because I would have made, dis I would have made different decisions. Yes, of course. You know? Uh, for instance, at one point, you know, I, I you remember we were in uh, Minneapolis, oh, and I was yes. working at a radio station, and the boss said, uh, never do that again, and I said, well, find someone else to do it, and I quit right then and there, right? You can't if you have kids. If you have kids, I would have, ne I would have thought twice before <laughs> I said that to them, you know? Yes, of course. And, uh, and I wouldn't have traveled as much for the work I was doing for 20 years. That, you know, I kept a go bag by the door, and I'd often get a call in the morning. There's a ticket at the airport. We're going to London or whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you can't do that if you've got a kid to take to school in the morning. Well, I was looking for a job when I was in New York, uh, anywhere, and I got a call from Houston, Texas, uh, from uh, I think it was KILT, who wanted to hire me to come down and work for them again. You mean after you uh, after we'd already been there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was okay. this was towards the end of my stay in New York, uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, they even flew me down there, and we talked about it. And then I went back, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it. You were I, a big, 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 big hit in Houston. You were a star there. Yeah, but you know the point that I'm making is is that I did not have any money at the time. I mean, things were not good. I was without a job. And uh, I turned it down anyway. And I wouldn't have done that had I had children. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And uh, uh, as a result, uh, the next call I got a couple of weeks later was from San Francisco, California, where they wanted me to come and work for them. And that sounded like a good idea. But had I taken the other job first, I wouldn't have taken that job or right. been able yes. to. So, exactly. so what I'm saying is, is that without children, you have options. <laughs> I hate to say that. But. I think you have different kinds of options. I've yeah. never met a parent who wasn't head over heels in love with their kids. And that's a whole thing that you and I don't understand, really. Uh, it's unconditional love. You know, yeah. I mean. And, and we have no experience of that. Somebody said, what, 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 what's it like to have somebody who pees all over you and poops all over you and you love them? <laughs> <laughs> you know fortunately that part doesn't last too long <laughs> i guess it doesn't last that long but then you get the terrible twos and then then they're going to break your heart when they're a teenager you know that you know well, they're programmed to do that <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean um uh, we never had to go through any of that and i don't know that i i at a certain level i miss it it would be nice but on the other hand i don't miss it you know because i did have the career and I can say that my life was very good without children. Mm -hmm. okay? And I think you could say the same thing. I mean, look at all the wonderful places you traveled for Barbara, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, I skipped all the hard part, and now I've got a four-year-old grandkid. Exactly. How lucky for me. <laughs> so, so, somebody else did the work for you. Right. <laughs> Why, let me ask you this question. When, back then, maybe you discussed this with him. Why did you decide to give the child up? Uh, there were many reasons, but basically I was 21 years old. Back in 19, um, was it 63, I think? 21, when we were 21, was a much, much younger age than 21 is now. Yes. 21-year-olds um, are like practically 30-year-olds when we were back then. And um, and I, you know, I'd had to quit my job because in those days, it was, a, men got away with it, 
but women who were pregnant who weren't married were absolutely ostracized. Well, what All I'm saying friends, is, that I was going to say, there's a term we don't use today, and that's unwed mother. Unwed mother. I was an unwed mother, and you know, I'd call my friends, my girlfriends, about let's go do this or that. All of a sudden, they were too busy for me. And I was all alone. I didn't have a job. I'd had to leave my job. I was living with my mother. And I, you know, I worked in the offices in those days. You're the one who gave me my career by producing your show. Yeah. Um, and I didn't think that I was equipped at all to be able to make a living and raise a child and live in a world where having a child when you weren't married had not been married when you had that child i didn't think i could do that and here's what was terribly lucky i've forgotten all the details of how he was adopted but during my pregnancy they an adoption we went through the procedures for the adoption and i was given the information on three or four couples who wanted to adopt and I was given even their names. I could have met them if I wanted. I didn't. But, you know, who they were, their ages, their education, what kind of people they were, what they did for a living, and so on. And I could choose. And if I want, you know, who I thought would be good parents for them. Mm -hmm. And apparently, according to my son, I did a very good job. <laughs> um, and he had he says he had a terrific upbringing loves his parents they're both uh dead now um and i did a good job and it was i know he had a better life than he would have had with me and i there's a whole lot of things from my family background that would have made it difficult for me to know much about raising a child mm -hmm. and not very many people to turn to to help me so I think for all of us, I did the right thing. Well, as I say, you know, there, there, there are terms that go out of fa fashion. <laughs> and unwed mother is one of them. You never hear that term anymore. No. and Single you know, parent. <clears throat> single parent you hear a lot, but not unwed mother. No. And what happened back in those days, particularly when I was still in high school, is every year when you went back to school in the fall, one or two of the girls didn't show up and they'd gone to live with their aunts somewhere right. in Kansas you right. know um and there were there were homes for unwed mothers unwed mother yes. homes yes Did you yeah yeah and it was a terrible thing all your friends disappeared they wouldn't have anything to do with you and um uh, and you were just ostracized from life yeah but you look know? at the benefit <laughs> it happened a couple of weeks ago to you listen there's something quickly i want to talk about we're running over but i don't care you know, I have so I, 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 have, I have two hours to waste here. You said that you wanted to mention what you did last week. You, you went on. A, no, we'll do that next time. OK. All right. OK. Because I want to hear. About very, it. very interesting. And we'll talk about it next time. Yeah. Did it. Was it helpful to you? Oh, yes. OK. Well, uh, with, with <laughs> that, see, what we'll do is that's the cliffhanger for the next. Uh, <laughs> yes. For the next right. gathering. <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, you look, believe it or not, you don't look tired. I'm exo I'm tired. All the time I'm tired. And I, <laughs> I look at you and I go, she's tired? You know? Listen, I got out of the shower about two hours before we started this. And I'm like, God, I'm tired. I'll lie down for 30 minutes. I slept for an hour and a half. Oh, <laughs> That's going to be my day, I'm pretty sure, the rest of the day, too. Oh, well. Anyway, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? Okay. Ladies we'll and gentlemen, oh, that's Ronnie Bennett, by the way, timegoesby.net. That's where you go if you want to read her wonderful meanderings. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. Love you, dear. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Ah, yes. And that, of course, is my uh, ex wife, Ronnie. That's why she uses the name Bennett. Uh, in fact, hers is legal. She actually had it legally changed to Bennett. I am, my name is still Schwarzman, so it was the only bet, re, truly true Bennett in the room. Anyway, uh, uh, we hear from her every couple of weeks, and I know maybe some of you are bothered by hearing stories about somebody and what they're going through as they move on to whatever is next. Uh, but I think it's important. 
and I think that what she's saying and doing is important, and it's important for a lot of people, including myself, who have never been able to cope with the concept of death, and uh, maybe she's making just a tad bit easier for me. Uh, but, you know, I still have my great fears, and, uh, um, you know, there was, what was it? There was that, uh, that show with um, that movie that Albert Brooks did, I'm trying to remember the name of it now, where he goes to uh, uh, a place between heaven and hell when they would decide whether, well, whether you're going to go on to heaven or not. And uh, what was the name of that movie? I loved it, too. Um, and you had to prove that you lived your life without fear. I'd be going, I wouldn't be going to heaven, I'll tell you that. If that is the, the qualification to go to the next level, from limbo or wherever you are halfway. I, I don't know anything about religion, so what am I even talking about? But anyway, the movie was about that and about learning how to live, you know, why, how you live your life without fear. And I, uh, uh, I've lived my whole life in fear of everything, of everything. Uh, terrible, terrible. Anyway, listen, the lines are open. Uh, it's the first of the year. Phil isn't going to call tonight, so... Uh, uh, it's uh, clear for all the rest of you. Although, you know, Phil's been a good boy lately, actually, I think. Um, so I, I, I enjoy him being on the show. So when he says he's not going to be here, it's going to be a Phil-free night. Well, I go, okay, well, hopefully we will get some other people calling here. So our lines are open, and I'm going to sit here and just wait for you to uh, uh, start calling uh, and uh, see if any of you really care to be part of a citizen panel or if my skype works anymore you know that uh, i what happens is i go on vacation we took two we, we took a week and a half off okay which would have been nice if it was a month to tell you the damn truth but we took a week and a half off and in that week and a half i forgot how to do everything here <laughs> It's true. I mean, everything I have to do, it's almost like I have to relearn it again. Uh, and uh, you would think it would just come, come to you just like that, you know. That's what I've found with technology over the years is that uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. In other words, if, if you forget how to do it, like years ago, I learned how to actually program in BASIC, which was a very simple a language for computers, but I learned how to program in it. If you asked me today how to program in BASIC, I, could, I couldn't do it, you know. Uh, I used to be able to program in HTML. Uh, I used to write websites that I would do in the very beginning. You didn't have programs that allowed you to just, you know, like I do now, take the pictures and place them on the thing. And, and it creates the whole H, what they call HTML, which is the language of the web page, to place those things on your, on your page. You had to actually write that HTML code, and you had to tell where you wanted the picture to be and, uh, and all of that. And I wrote that shit. I did that every day for several years, all right? I don't know how to do it anymore. If you ask me, I, I do know a few little basic things. If you want the writing to be bold, you put a, 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 a open, uh, you put brackets and then a B. And on the other end of it, when you don't want it to be bold anymore, you go do brackets again and then a forward slash and then a B. And then, a, yeah, that's it. That's what I learned. That was, uh, that was, that, that, uh, I, but I learned how to, how to do those. I can't do them anymore. I have no idea. Would not remember, I think, even an iota of basic. All right? And yet I was able to write little basic programs. Like once I wrote a program. Hey, I'm waiting for your calls, by the way, folks. Uh, uh, I, um, uh, 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 wrote a basic program for my lawyer. And it was actually, it was a kind of a nasty thing I was doing. I, I called it the lawyer meter. And I sent it to him and I said, hey, install, it in your, install this in your computer. And then when anybody calls you, just type in how much you charge per hour. And as you're talking to them, it will roll off how much time they're spending. <laughs> and I sent it to him, he didn't like that. But that's what I did with my knowledge of BASIC. It was a very simple program to do, and that was it. 
How these people write programs today, I have no idea. Uh, they're they're nuts, and uh, they, uh, uh, they 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 for some reason they know how to write in this language. There are several different languages, some of which are just so complicated. There are there are those that you write that have a certain language to them, and you can write in that language. Um, uh, and you know things like Pascal and Fortran and so on. Although I don't know how many of those are used any longer. Um, but there was one that I couldn't figure out how anybody did it. It was called machine language, and you literally wrote for the machine. And I mean, if you saw what these people wrote, it made no sense at all. It was just a bunch of letters and numbers and things like that, and you know, and it was called machine language. And I, I just, how, I said to myself, how can these guys possibly do machine language? Just, you know, it just amazed me that we could do machine language. So these guys, I consider these guys from outer space is what I considered them. Ah, here's our first caller of the year, ladies and gentlemen. It's Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Where? By the way, I forgot to ask you, where are you living again these days? Uh, oh, oh. Mesa, Arizona. Mesa, Arizona. Don't yeah. forget Sedona. King, King Mimbarsto, <laughs> Sam me, Bernardino. Uh, that's, uh, that's an old song by Bobby Troop called Route 66. But why'd you move to Arizona? You were in Texas, if I remember correctly. Yes, I was in Texas for 43 years. And, and, and you moved because of a woman? Yep. And we're not even together anymore. And you're anymore. not together anymore. You know, that's always the story. I used to get that from women I was dating. And I'd go, so how'd you get to New York? Well, my boyfriend got a job here, so we moved here, and then we broke up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I found myself stuck in New York. And you go, well, okay, all right, I, 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 it's, that's fine. Well, there are worse places to be stuck in than Mesa, Arizona. It's probably very nice there. Am I right? It's beautiful. Yeah. One the cloud in the sky all day today. Yeah, I, it's it's desert though, isn't it? Yeah, it's dry. Yeah, but but, uh, but I mean, it, it rains about four days a year. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> so a guy on TV as a weather forecaster doesn't have much to do, does he? No, just follow the dust storms. You know. Yeah, well, we're gonna have a dust storm today. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, because um, I, I, you know, you kind of wonder about that. Oh, here comes Tommy Amaguchi. Hold on a second. Let me uh, bring him online. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yep, everything gets. And there's Tom Yamaguchi. Hi, Tom. Hi, Happy New Year. Yeah. Say hello. Happy to, New Year, Tom. Uh, say hello to our old friend. Uh, by the way, yeah. Uh, leave the movie that you're talking about is one that actually I've never seen yet. I do want to see it. It's called Defending Your Life. Defending Your Life. That was yeah. I still have. I, I know you really like it, and uh, it's interesting you bring that up because um, uh, Mr. Brooks' uh, brother died today. Yes, I was going to mention oh. that we had quite a few deaths today. Actually, we, yeah. today was your your. It was a a um, what could we call it? It was a a, a gold. Uh, a gold rush for you today, with because, <laughs> because Tom always. Let me go get the paper I put out here. Tom always likes to write, uh, you know, things yeah. about Didn't, obituaries. I didn't read any of these today. Wait a minute, what happened? Wait a minute, what, what, what is that? Somebody did something. Oh, I, 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 oh, uh, boy. I enlarged the. Uh, That's bad, dude. Get rid of that now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, is that, that better? That no, that doesn't do it at all either. Why don't you hang up and call us back? Oh, All right, we'll do yeah, that. Call us back. Don't, oh boy, that's that's <laughs> bad. How did, how, did, how, did that, how did that happen? Yeah, oh boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. That's that's what I don't like about the new Skype. I think it's too easy to do that sort of thing, and then it affects what we're doing here. And there yeah. we go, you're back. Okay, don't Is do that. that. Yeah, don't. What did you do so people don't know what to do? So they don't not to do well, it. When I when I first connected with you, you were just a little box in the upper right of the screen, and I just made it full screen. Oh, well, don't do that. I won't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. That really fucks us up. No, anyway, so we were talking, and today uh, it, was, it was literally a gold rush of death, uh, if I might 
put it that way. I don't know that that's the right way to put it. Uh, mm -hmm. But we start with, you mentioned uh, Albert Brooks's brother, who was uh, Bob Einstein, who you, people knew as Super Dave Osborne. They knew of him as, uh, uh, mm -hmm. what was it, Funkhauser Super on... Super Dave! Uh, oh, and, no! And uh, Marty Funkhauser on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he was Albert Brooks's brother. The only reason that Albert Brooks changed his name to... Um, uh, Albert Brooks for show business was that his name was really Albert Einstein. <laughs> so, uh, what, what is that? Who's who's making noise? I think maybe it was Tom. I have no idea. But anyway, Probably. yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, I uh, I remember um, Bob Einstein back on the Smothers Brothers comedy hour. Yeah, right, he was one of the writers he, on the he, show, and he was also Officer Judy. Yes, remember yes. Officer Judy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. big guy. And uh, he, um, uh, you know, he was a very funny guy. I think where I the funniest I've ever seen him. If you get to see comedian comedians and cars getting coffee with Jerry Seinfeld, which is on Netflix, there's one with Bob Einstein. It's just he's hilarious. Mm -hmm. And they also tell the story about his father dying. Um. His father was a comedian who was known on radio as Park Your Carcass. And uh, he used to be, I think I was on the, Ed, he was on the Eddie Cantor show. And um, he was a dialect comic. And uh, his name was, what was it, Al Einstein maybe was his name? If I'm, no, not Al. Uh, oh God, I'm trying to remember his first name. Uh, but anyway, I can't remember anything anymore. Not since the pills. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh his father died at a roast at the Friars Club for Lucy and Desi. Wow. wow. And literally, his head fell into Milton Berle's lap. And they thought for a second that he was pulling some kind of joke, you know, that he was being funny. But he wasn't. He was dead. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Bob Einstein tells the story about how he didn't know his father was dead till he heard it on the news the next morning. And he was just a kid at the time, wow. you know. Yeah. Um, but um, they were both uh, sons of a comedian. So they had a whole comic tradition in their family, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, I always liked Albert better than I liked uh, Bob's work. But then uh, as time has gone on, I've gotten a fond appreciation of Bob's work. You know, I've gone back and seen some of the Super Dave stuff and gone, not bad. You know, especially compared to what shit we've got today. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Welcome to the new year. I'm good. I'm good. Welcome to. Uh, I don't even know what year it is yet. It, it is. It <laughs> is. Do you know? I, I'm getting to the point. I've got to really get a job. I'll tell you why. Because uh, I start forgetting what day of the week it is. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, think, uh, yeah, and, and if you don't have a job to go to, you know, you don't sit there going, well, today's Wednesday because I got two more days till the weekend. You know, you, you, you have a, a gauge in your life and I don't have a gauge except for this. So if I don't do this, I'm going to be in real trouble. You know, I'm going to just not know where I am. I'll just be some kind of drooling Jew on the subway. You know? <laughs> uh, hello, Tony. Hey, what's up? How was your holiday? Uh could be better, I guess. Really? Oh. I didn't do shit. I had really is my, I? I birthday, my birthday sucked. <laughs> Christmas, nothing. You know, <laughs> and New Year's, we had to cancel our plans because girlfriend was sick. And also, it was all the way downtown, and under normal circumstances, we just hop on the subway and go down there. Yeah. We, you don't, we wouldn't want to take a cab on New Year's Eve. It's just, it would take, we could start here and we'd get there by Wednesday, you know? Well, yeah, so uh, because she couldn't get on the subway and it was going to rain and all of that, we just stayed home and didn't go to the party. So all my three events of this time of the year were completely fucked. I never liked New Year's, to tell you the truth. I played games, though. I went to my sister's around the corner. Yeah. And then I came home because my mother's not feeling good. Well, so no, I, I New, New Year's, usually we hold here, and we have, our, we have Shecky over, and we have our friends uh, Jack and Natalia, and we have uh, our friends Adrian and Eddie, and we just sit around and we toast in the New Year, and everybody goes home before the 
traffic gets too heavy. Mm. You know. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have the sound up because I get a cat here and that would freak the cat out. Um, by the way, is this precocious for this cat? Uh, she found a place she really likes to sleep. And it's on a comforter, on a bed. And it's in the guest room. And I think she's using that room because she is a guest. I think the precociousness, <laughs> precociousness of the cat is her favorite room. It's the guest room. So anyway, uh, I'd let you see the cat, but she'd probably walk in at some point. But anyway, uh, but I've got to keep the door closed so girlfriend can sleep. Um, so we lost uh, we lost uh, uh, Albert, uh, Albert Brooks's brother, uh, Bob Einstein. And then we lost Gene Okerlund. You know who you you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Uh, no. Any of you besides uh, Tom know what I'm talking about? Uh, I knew immediately. A girlfriend said, "Who's that?" And I said, "Gene Okerlund." His face? Huh? You recognize him by his she face? Wouldn't I wouldn't know his name, but but I did. Oh yeah, the wrestling guy. Yeah, well, he she wouldn't even recognize him by his face. She didn't watch any of that stuff. You know. Yeah. But Gene Okerlund was the uh, kind of that we could call him the announcer on the WWF, which later became the WWE. And uh, he would interview all the wrestlers and stuff, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, the public really liked Gene Okerlund. He was called Mean Gene Okerlund for some strange reason, but there was nothing mean about the guy. No, no. Yeah. I think they said it was Hulk Hogan that gave him the nickname. Uh, mean Gene? <laughs> yeah. It could be. Yeah. could be. Uh, he died, and now oddly enough, Bob Einstein died at 76. Mm -hmm. Gene Okerlund died at 76. Yeah. And guess who else died at 76? Yes, we had another death today at 76. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, here's the thing for my blood <laughs> test. Captain. Let me, I have a blood test. A blood test on Monday in which I'll find that I have cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the third one was Daryl Dragon. Uh, who was? Does anybody know who Daryl Dragon is? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know that uh, that Tom knows. Uh, do you remember the the Captain and Tennille? Yeah. Love, okay, love, that's why it's familiar. Us together, okay. yeah. Uh, uh, he was the he was the captain of the Captain and Tennille, and mm -hmm. I remember him. I, I remember him especially because his father was. Do you know his father was uh, Tom? No, you don't know. His father was Carmen Dragon. And Carmen Dragon uh, used to be the, uh, I think, the uh, conductor for the uh, Hollywood Bowl Symphony. Uh -huh. And also he did uh, the Standard School broadcast. If you remember, there was something called the Standard School broadcast. And uh, he did some movies, and I think one of the movies he did the music for was Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Okay, yeah. So he did movies. Huh? He did movies. Wait a minute. You're, you're, somehow you're being muted. Uh, you're, you're kind of um, being... Your microphone, is, something's in the way of your microphone. I think I've got a bad connection. Really? Really? I think I've got a... Yeah, I've no, got a bad connection. No, it, it sounded no, like it was... back. No. It sounded like it was muffled, like you had covered okay. it with something. Uh, yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, so that was Carmen Dragon was Daryl Dragon's father. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he, of course, has been dead for a long time, so we don't need to give that obituary here. But Daryl Maestro, right? Yeah. Daryl Dragon was 76. We lost three people today who were all exactly the same age. And I'm glad I'm not 76 because I would be like, checking my pulse every couple of minutes here to make sure I was okay. But, uh, yeah, they're all gone. They're all gone. And remember, we lost Penny Marshall. Well, they came up with her death certificate, finally. And it revealed that the longtime Laverne and Shirley star died of heart failure. Heart disease and complications from diabetes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. That's what that was what did her in. 
Oh. You know. Uh, and uh, I was watching the Odd Couple yesterday. <clears throat> the the what, marathon. Yeah, but outside they, of the fact they had the same producer, what does that have to do with Laverne and? Shirley? No, I liked her on the show that he had her on. You know, and she was always writing his report, like Oscar stuff. It like had mayonnaise on his show. What? Like, what? I don't even know what you're talking no, like, about. Penny Washer. She was his secretary. Who's secretary? Uh, on the Odd Couple, Oscar. On the Odd she Couple, a, okay, because uh, Gary Marshall produced that show. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, uh, you know, she became known more for Laverne and Shirley and then for her work in movies where she did some really good stuff. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like she was, uh, oh, look, a girl's doing a movie. Let's try to appreciate her. No, she was really good. Yes, uh, Jeff. I remember when I was a child, and yeah. I'm talking about like five years old, mm -hmm. that I had a doctor, and and you know this was the doctor who was well all Jew, all Jews when they when they when they as they're growing up they go through various stages. One of the stages, of course, is a bar mitzvah. The other one is your first doctor. Go ahead. So he you know lived down the street, and he worked. I think he owned the house and. Part of his house was there, and part of it was his office. Yeah. <clears throat> and he died. He was 40 years old. He had a heart attack. When was this? <laughs> this is, uh, well, I said I was six years old. Yeah. Uh, do the math. <laughs> it was only 65 years ago or so. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, that was common years. That 40 years was a very common time to have a heart attack and die. Of course, uh, today... Well, uh, there were a lot of things we didn't know about staying in good health. One of which was most of those doctors, you'd go into their office and they'd be talking to you while they were puffing on a cigarette. Oh, they were on the camels. Remember the ad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I remember nine out of ten doctors recommended Luckies. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. They had it always bad for the smoking. <laughs> the tenth doctor didn't recommend the luckies because he told you you shouldn't smoke. The rest didn't give a shit, you know. Smoking a cigarette. Oh yeah, no. I mean, <laughs> we, you know, you think about that, but that's really antiquated. You know that, that uh, you would never see a doctor smoking mm -mm. at all. I would hope not now. And if they do, I mean, they're, they're, they're I don't know a doctor that smokes. Imagine the guy you go to the hot doctor, he's puffing away one after another. Yeah, but I mean, they didn't know. It's funny, they didn't realize the danger that smoking was doing to people. You know, they just figured, oh, I gave you a cough, you know. I gave you, my mother used to spit black up, though, Alex. That had to be bad. What? My mother in the morning when she smoked, she used to always, like, have that morning cough. Oh, I remember yeah. that as a kid. Oh, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and also, I mean, there was another thing about smoking. It was the first thing you did, you lit up in the morning, and it was the first thing you put, last thing you put out at night. You didn't smoke before you went to bed? Oh, sure. <laughs> sure, and I inhaled and tried to keep it in, in me as long as I could till I got to sleep. No, I'm just kidding. But no, no, I mean, I, I was a two-pack-a-day guy. Did you know you were addicted, though, to it right away, though, or no? Well, I knew I was having a hard time trying to quit. That seemed to indicate right something away. to me. You know, I didn't quit till I was uh, 42, I think. Wow. You know. Uh, I, I mean, I think I think about it now, and that was like almost what? How many years ago was that, Tom? Uh, 1982? Uh, nine, yeah. No, excuse me. Yeah, you quit. Yeah, you quit in 1982. Yeah, 1982. That's 37 years ago. Yeah. I think you quit. Yeah, so that's 37 years. Yeah. So what happens is I go to a doctor, and he, you know they have you fill out those forms. Did you ever smoke? Yes, I smoked. How many years? 20 years. Okay. So we're having a conversation one day, and he's deciding he's got to stick a, a telescope up my dick, and I'm trying to tell him I don't really want it. And he said, well, you know, you might have bladder cancer. Oh, my God. They always give you Is these. You might have bladder cancer, so we got, we got to stick a telescope up your dick. Oh, great. You know. So he, I, said, I said, why would I have bladder cancer? He says, because you smoked. I said, yeah, but I stopped smoking, and when I was going through this with this guy. I think I had quit 30 years earlier. I said, I quit 30 years ago. He says, yes, but when you smoked, you smoked for 40 pack years. 
40 pack a year. Oh, it was two packs a day. Yeah. He said, you smoked for 40 pack a year. And I went, wow. I said, and I could have bladder cancer still, even though I quit 30 years ago? And he said, yes. And I looked at him, and I looked him straight in the face, and I said, then why the fuck did I ever quit? Because you wanted to live. And he gave me a, he couldn't answer that one. <laughs> he couldn't answer that one. Oh, he's, All right, let's light up. <laughs> you know. Yes, yes, uh, Tom. I've, I've been losing my connection several times, so if I lose me, I'll try to reboot. But I just want to mention that uh, actually, uh, for a couple of weeks this past November, I became a smoker. No way! What happened? Oh, uh, we had some bad forest fires. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh I was going to say, you you smoke because you like. Mm. You know, I, I was thinking maybe getting a mask. My, my rest of my family had masks, but I said, okay, what I'll just do is. I'll just go only go out when I really, really need to go out. Right. And right. hang out inside most of the time. But I'm just <laughs> wondering if uh, that if that's what's going to kill me is is all the smoke that I broke was breathing. I it know. was really, really no, bad. No, you, you know something. But, to begin with, you were breathing in a different kind of smoke. Mm-hmm. You know, it was it even was, more toxic. <laughs> well, I, no, I don't know if it was. I think it was. It was it, well, if buildings were burning down, you were probably breathing in some asbestos. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. But overall, yeah. and wood, all the other chemicals. Yeah. I mean, petrochemicals. You know, you had yeah. cars in those garages up there, and you know, what else would it? You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't. I just don't know if that's that. You know that that the kind of smoke you were br- breathing in, and for the really, I hate to say this, relatively short amount of time that you were, would get you anything. I think, for instance, people who did breathe in the asbestos from the World Trade Center are having problems today from the smoke, and from not from the smoke so much as the asbestos. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, well, you, well, you have to just get like a speck right with the asbestos out, like a, like a dot. It's saying in you, dude, that could be it. No, no, I mean, you can breathe in asbestos, but the problem is it has a hard time getting out of your system. You know, it's very invasive. Um, so a lot of the people that work the pile down at the World Trade Center, you know, have been dying. Uh, uh, but, you know, when we, when we first decided that it was bad to smoke, mm. uh, you know, because all of us did it. I mean, it was for me, I, st- my, my wife, Ronnie, is the one who started me smoking. Really? Yes. When we were going together, she smoked mm-hmm. Newports. And she and so I wanted to impress her that I was going to smoke too. And I started smoking Newports. I even, I even went out and got a Newport lighter. I mean, I got the whole, the whole kit, right? And those days you could smoke, uh, you know, two packs a day. Didn't cost shit, right? Today, you're going to spend a hundred thousand dollars a year smoking two packs a day. I don't know how much it costs, but anyway, she, um, I started smoking because of her and, um, I didn't quit for 30 years. And, um, I, you know, but the thing was, when I started, it was it was the fancy thing to do. You know, the cigarette was a prop. It was a it was a sophisticated social thing. You know, it was associated with being sophisticated. Uh, Territons used to like to have commercials with guys wearing tuxedos smoking cigarettes. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and, and we didn't know what cigarettes actually did to you, but we began to find out in the late fifties. And when we started to learn, it was like automatically the cigarette companies went into a state of denial. Now, I'm not saying they knew that it caused cancer before then, but when they knew that it did, they -hmm. should have done something about it. And they didn't. Uh, And uh, they fought it forever. Um, And uh, but I mean, the most dangerous thing we did, what I did when I was a kid was smoke. You know, I really flirted with death. I quit in time. Yes, Tom. I say there's a great movie out. Actually, there's all, it's also a book called The Merchants of Doubt that uh, they, they deal with all the, how the cigarette and industry had responded to the facts by trying to uh, cause doubt in people to keep them to, to, uh, to continue to smoke. 
Yeah. So it's a yeah. If you get a chance to to read, I, your um, your friend uh, the card guy uh, Jamie Gillis. Oh, yeah, Jamie Gillis. Jamie Jamie. Oh uh, <laughs> uh, no! You know something? I I I better I just better quit. I I uh, <laughs> these pills. Yeah, the guy that does the cards. Yeah, yeah, Jamie. Um, Jamie. Yeah. I call him Jamie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie Ian. Yeah. Swiss. He was. James. James is Swiss, yeah. yeah. He lives in San Diego now. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he uh, he's he, he's in the movie and he's really great in it. So yeah. if you ever get a chance to see it, uh, it's called Merchants of Doubt. I missed him by this much at a party the other night because I st I stayed for about three hours at this party and they said, "Well, he's going to come. He's going to come. He's going to be here," and mm -hmm. he never showed up. So I said, "Do you have any message for Jamie when I see him?" He said, "Tell him to go fuck himself." Oh. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but I, I couldn't stick around for him. And then he wrote me a note saying, I'm sorry, I was I was going to get there earlier, but I didn't. I would love to have seen you. I went, well, you know. So much for you, Jamie. Yes. Uh, 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 oh, God, my mind's a mess. <laughs> Charles. That's a no, it's this damn gabapentin. Yes, yeah. Charles. Yeah, I, I just want to point out that the same tactic that the cigarette companies were using back in the 60s and 70s to cast doubt on cigarette smoking's dangers is the same tactics that the oil companies are using yeah. today to cast doubt on global warming. Yeah, in fact, that's the point of the movie, uh, Merchants of Doubt, is it, it, it shows the, the comparison between the art, you know, the doubts that regarding climate change today. So, yeah, once again, I really recommend you see I'll it. Tell you okay. what I, well, I'll tell you what I don't understand. Um, uh, and now, the cigarette companies would have had a hard time doing this, so they diversified into other businesses, okay, besides cigarettes. Although they still, you know, they still have a great cigarette business outside the United States. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. People still haven't given up smoking in other countries quite like they have here. But... Uh, uh, the gas companies and the oil companies really should have spent all their time saying, okay, let's start looking into alternate power sources that we can own, okay? And they never did it. So, you know, I mean, who, who's going to have the lion's share of, of, of power and so on? It's all these people that are into the new power. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and there were things that were impractical for a while, but they're not as impractical as they used to be. Like solar used to be impractical, but they made it more efficient so that you get more power off your sun and everything. And they've got that one coming down pretty good. I mean, look at Apple's headquarters that they built, that big saucer-shaped building. The entire top is nothing but solar panels that powers the entire place. Mm -hmm. So... You know, but why the, why the gas companies didn't go into that? The oil companies, you know, uh, why they didn't diversify into solar power? Why they didn't look for other forms of power? Uh, I mean, we had, you know, I mean, we did have other sources of power. Hoover Dam was another source of power, a clean source of power that served most of Southern California. You know, that wasn't uh, that wasn't a petro. Uh, power source so um, you know anyway we didn't know this stuff and it, it you know it wound up killing a lot of us and they're going now who knows one of these three people we mentioned today may have died because they smoked cigarettes possible yeah yeah I knew my mother tried to quit she was very cranky like she would get agitated remember the nicotine oh it, it makes you a piece of shit for a couple of for a while if you tell people you're quitting smoking, they don't mind you being an asshole for a while, you know, because you're, <laughs> you're mandatory. Hey, listen, I've I've quit a lot of drugs in my time. Uh, and I would say that smoking is the worst, was the hardest to quit, mainly because it was a habit, you know. Uh, but I mean, I quit. I know a lot of other people that tried to quit and never could quit. And um, I had a, um, Abby Hoffman, my friend Abby Hoffman, before he died, he wrote a book on addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, he, well, because he had been, uh, people don't know this about Abby, most people don't know this, he was a uh, clinical psychologist. And uh, he wrote a book about addiction, and I was interviewing him about it, and I said, you know, 
I quit cigarettes and I gave it up and never went back. I said, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't ridiculously hard either. He said, you know why some people can't quit and you were able to? I said, why? He said, you were habituated to smoking. You weren't addicted. There's a difference between addiction and habituation and the ease with which it is to quit something if you're habituated to it rather than uh, addicted to it. And that made a lot of sense to me because I quit smoking and it was, it was not easy, but it wasn't horrible either once I put my mind to it, you know. Uh, and uh, I remember how I quit. I used You remember Bantron? You remember those cigarettes, those little pills called Bantron? And what they were were nicotine pills that delivered nicotine into your system so that you could quit and uh, not have to, you know, suffer the same uh, 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 withdrawal symptoms oh. that you would normally get from, from smoking cigarettes. So I tried that, and I used that for about a week, and then I stopped using the Bantron, and then I just said, I think I can do it. And any time I wanted a cigarette, I just took a deep breath in, inhaled it, and held it. It filled my lungs up, and I was used to that. And then I exhaled, and I was fine. Hello, Brian Ludwig. How are you? Hello. Not bad. How was your fucking holiday? Uneventful. Uneventful? So. Okay. No. Me too. <laughs> did, and did you do anything, Tom? What did you do? I uh, spent New Year's Eve helping some people move into their house in uh, Oakland. From, they just moved from Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when I got home, I was just totally exhausted. I turned on, I t- turned on my computer, saw my email, saw that you were on, uh, clicked on, watched the program. Was too tired to call in, yeah. so I just watched, and then I was asleep by eleven o'clock. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, I the only reason I stayed up to midnight was so uh, because I decided to do that that show. Uh, you know, and I stayed up till one o'clock, I guess, and then went to sleep. And girlfriend said, "Did you see the fireworks?" And I said, "I was doing a show. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't see the goddamn fireworks." Plus, I don't know were there fireworks, Tony. I mean, it was raining. You know, I I know I didn't see them, but I know in my area there's some stupid people that like to light the M80s off. My dogs got a little scared, but then it was kind of quiet then after that. No, no, I'm not, ta- I'm not talking about stuff. amateur fireworks. I'm talking about the oh, big okay. fireworks. At no, the I didn't see those, Alex, from Queens. Of course, you did I see, but you see probably it. saw the... Uh, I'm on you, TV, but I didn't see it. You probably, what you did see, hello, John Rockwell, what you probably did see, let me get my, my picture out of John Rockwell's picture. There. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, Happy New Year, anyway, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you see the big, uh, the big blue fire out there in Queens? No. no. Oh, I saw. Yeah, I saw that a little bit. Not live. Not live. I saw a lot of pictures on. What was that? News, it was. A, it live. was a. Uh, it was a fire at the uh, Con Ed Power Up in Plant. Astoria. Yeah. And, yeah. And it was like a blue, oh, blue flame, and people wondered what it was. They thought we were like being attacked by Martians. Hey, or something. I was hoping it was close encounters. My brother walking back to the house. Hey, so they're yeah, yeah, really real. I said he's a new scope. So it was a fire then. Yeah. It was a transmit. Trans- beautiful. It was. It was it's beautiful. Nice. Huge. I figured it were. I figured it the the most extreme. It was like some kind of natural event, like a aurora borealis event. But yeah, it's, it, it, well, it was. It didn't the, look it, like it, that, but it, it was the queen's. They said it sounded like lightning. You know, it's what the was same it? A transformer. Yeah, it was a it was a trans it was a transformer. How does it change the sky? Well, by the way, for people who for, for, for people who don't know the, what we're talking the, about, uh, when we said trans in the uh, um, you know, not not in the in the ground, but in the actual. Uh, you know, uh, generating plant when, when that he, it somehow oh, yeah. shorted out or something and started sparking all these big blue flames. Well, when John talks about stuff. talks about transformers, folks, we're not talking about the robots that turn into. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There were no power outages. That's what it? they thought. Yeah, that's what the, that's what the alien people. I, I got. I was hoping they're coming. This is good. Yeah. John, were there any power outages in the area or no? Oh uh, yeah, there were some. Sure, I have a friend. 
Some friends are just oh, moved yeah. past Korea. John, is they it true that they said their power was only for 20 minutes? Man. It was only for a short time. Minutes. And they didn't even see it. They just were, you know, they went, oh, the power's out. And they didn't even go out to look. And then it went back on. And somebody, they turn on the TV. It's like, oh, crap. That just happened down the street. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you're not looking in New York. Yeah. I mean, I could have looked down my that. street. My street outside, if I look east down there, it pretty much looks into, like, some part of Astoria up that up in the 80s. It's, yeah. okay. it's, it's close to Astoria. Or at least you know, a little north of uh, Long Island City. So I would have, oh, I would have seen it if it, if I was looking. Yeah. But I was in the beer bar, you know. I wasn't out, you know, watching the skies for, for blue aliens. So. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So uh, so what did you do? Uh, what did you do for uh, New Year's uh, or Me? or Christmas? I know what you did uh, for Thanksgiving. You had Thanksgiving here, but what did you do? Absolutely, for that was very nice what'd too. You, what did you do for Christmas? Now, and Christmas New Year? was very quiet. Um, I have, I have uh, my family, my main family, my sister and two nephews, uh, don't live anywhere around here. Uh, sister and one nephew live in Houston. So, uh, yeah. and uh, after my after earlier this year, my brother in law fell off a ladder and broke all sorts of stuff. So like, oh my God. So right before Christmas, my sister steps in a pothole and and, and cracks the uh, micro fractures in her hips so she couldn't go anywhere. It's like, my God, people don't, you know, you know, watch where you're stepping. Boy, you're making me feel better about my Christmas and New Year. Yeah. Well, I know you had, well, you had Marjorie to deal with, too. Oh, I had her to deal with. Doing? She hanging in there? Huh? Oh, yeah, she's doing fine. Well, the, I saw the, a picture or two you, you put up. So a week from uh, next Monday, the brace comes off. So All right. Then They're she good. won't be able to bend her knee, but then she has to go to physical therapy to, yeah. to work it out, you know. Oh, well, yeah. Well, you know, it takes a while because it, it's a... You know, to me, to get the flexibility don't, back. Don't worry, that's cool. after I get my uh, my diagnosis of cancer. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's going to be my, right. For my exactly. prostate, uh, my PSA test. I've been I've been oh. just just worrying so much about that PSA test, obsessing mm -hmm. about it, when I really shouldn't. I mean, you mm -hmm. take one thing at a time, right? Find out what the PSA. You had a long number, Alex. You were pretty good. I no, I didn't. Have, I know, my, but no, it, 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 had, right? it had jumped up, but it was oh, really? in the threes. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was still wasn't dangerous, but. Uh, you know, I, I'm worried that I'm going to go there and I'm going to say, well, no, we're going to have to do a Phil Meyer on you, you know. Oh, no, uh, you don't want to Phil Meyer. Oh, no. We don't what, do, we, turn, you, turn you a Republican? Don't want, we, we don't want the number 29, which <laughs> is the Phil Meyer. So, and plus, I have people that. around Surgery. me with, with cancer and stuff like that. <laughs> and so I'm just like, I'm just like obsessing yeah. over it. I, you know, I'm 79 years old. Daryl Dragon's dying at 76. You know, That's I, right. mean, I was just going to say, I, I just saw that yeah. before I logged on. Right. You know, uh, so. And Super so, Dave Os Super so, Dave Osborne. And yeah, so uh, oh, Gene Okerlund. Oh, he died. Oh, he died. Me, sorry, mean he Gene Okerlund died as well. He, pa he passed over like Evil Knievel. I sure for that. <laughs> Super Dave died too. I Super think. Dave, yeah. yeah. I didn't really watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's oh, where he was, he was more. He was more popular. Yeah. 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 The character was more popular, uh, or the actor than in that. But I remember him from the Super Dave years. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious stuff. Yeah. Yes, hey, John. John, do you remember him from the Smothers Brothers? Ah, uh, yeah. He was Officer. Uh, Judy, Judy or something like that, right? Yeah, exactly. Judy. Or doctor, something had a female name or something. Officer, Officer Judy. Yeah. Officer Judy, yeah. Yeah. And uh, very, very, very low key, you know, very flat sort of delivery. And you know, you're like, oh god, yeah. Well, totally, actually, totally actually, why he was on the Smothers Brothers show was he was one of the writers on the show. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know he was. I didn't know he was Albert Brooks's brother. Oh yeah. That's yeah. 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 Uh, Big Brother, I think. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that was just mentioned. Uh, a couple other people, I, I put I put up something on Facebook about it, and one of my guys said, "Yeah, I didn't know, but but I, I get Brooks's, uh, you know, postings and things, and he posts a whole thing about, you know, bye bye to my Big Brother." I'm like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> well, you so know, some, you know of, something. Of, it, we're, we're, we lost three people today. We lost uh, uh, Bob Einstein. We lost uh, Daryl right. Dragon. Right. And we lost uh, Gene Okerlund. And they were oh, all. That's right, me, Gene. And yeah. we mentioned this earlier. They were all 76 years old. 
Oh my God. Ow. Talk <laughs> about going in threes in spades. How, how old are you again, Alex? Huh? <laughs> how old are you again, Alex? Uh, I am 79. <laughs> okay. You, you made it past 76. So I'm not going to be able to die now. So, no, uh, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. You should fake your death, Alex, and see what they do. Well, you know what I have to look forward to? Either either I don't, I, either I die, which is yeah. not good news, right? Or I live to be 100 and I'm oh, a drooling, God. slobbering guy on the subway, like I said earlier, you know? So what do I have to look forward to? You know? We look forward to calling you. I mean, we were talking to Ronnie tonight about the fact that people have said to me, like, why is she doing the chemo? If it's only going to give her, like, eight extra months, you know, before she really gets the onset of the disease full, full born. That's uh, really when, none when, of their when, business. It's well, her decision. Well, no, what I'm, no it's not, not the point, uh, uh, actually. The point was that, yes, of course it is her decision. And I said to her, I said, you know, we can all sit here and say, why in the world? Why, if I had that happen to me, uh, I wouldn't do the chemo because blah, 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 blah. But you're not in that position. I would do You know, and if you suddenly got in that position, then what would you do? She knows she's right. going to die. She's been told Some it's fish. terminal. That's it. Goodbye. You've got, you know, uh, you don't have a sell-by date, but you've got, you know, the fruit is rapidly uh, is rapidly going bad. The fact is that as she agreed with me that it's very easy to sit there and say, why are you doing this? She says, I'm doing it because uh, two days out of uh, 14, I'm suffering from the chemo, and the rest of the time I'm feeling pretty damn good. So she said, why shouldn't I? She said, when yeah. I start to feel bad 13 days of the month because of the chemo, then I'm going to know maybe it's time to stop. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she said, you take it uh, 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 one day at a time, you know, I, I would do it too. That's good. That sound logic for someone who wants to live. I give her credit. Well, and, and she also she brought up one other thing. If you heard the interview earlier and that was, that you know, a few months ago, uh, she found it, when I first met her, she had given birth to a child that was given up for adoption. And for a whole life, she never knew where that kid was. And probably every now and then, I know it passes my mind about my kid. You know, is he still alive? You know, I mean, I don't know. Uh, but she, through one of these DNA tests that her this guy took, found out that she was his mother. Mm. And so they finally met up with each other. And she said to me, you know, if I hadn't had that pancreatic operation which was horrible to get over many months ago, many about a year and a half ago. Uh, and, and when I was going through the recovery, she said, I, I, I wish I, I would rather be dead. She says, I'm glad I didn't die then because I didn't live long enough for this to happen. That's a good point. You know? mm -hmm. So maybe that's why you extend your time. You just don't know. You know, uh, you, you, you you, serve, you do it for as long as you feel you can do it, and then when it's too much, you just go, okay. You know, the suffering is worse than just going, you know, the relief from it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting situation, but uh, she's, she's made me feel better about all of this. And next time we talk, she'll tell you what she did to get over the fear of death. It's a, and it's a very interesting story, but I... I can't tell you here because she's not going to reveal it till, I think, Friday on her, and her blog. But it's it's something she did, and uh, it's, it's very it'd be fascinating. And she'll talk about it the next time uh, we're together. Um, what I what I like about it is I'm not on radio, and I can do these things with Ronnie because on radio this would be death to ratings. You know, mm -hmm. having somebody come on every two weeks and tell you about their dying. And, and what it's like and what they're going through. But I think it's a valuable lesson to all of us, you know. Yeah. And so that's why uh, I'm doing it uh, for as long as she wants to do it. Uh, so uh, Brian didn't do anything on New Year's. Yeah, I'm not feeling better about my New Year's. Uh, what did you do? Did you do anything, Jeff? Well, we had, uh, you know, we had a lot of family staying in our house for um almost a month and 
because Pam's uh, mother's been uh, was in the hospital and, mm-hmm. and she's got uh, dementia and whatever. So her sister and her family was here. So the, the nice thing was they decided on New Year's Eve to to leave and go home. Oh, really? <laughs> and to drive. So yeah, we had a little party between them. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, uh, well, I, uh, uh, yeah, I got an interesting thing. My business manager, Gary called us the other day and said, uh, listen, we have a proposal. Would you mind if we used your place to have a dinner party when we're in New York? Oh. And we said, well, yeah, what's on your, how do you plan to do this? He says, oh no, I and my wife, Barbara, we're going to cook dinner for you and six other people. Wow. So they're mm-hmm. going to because and, and Gary's very good at cooking. He's terrific at it. It's by the fact that he's kosher. He still is the best, one of the best cooks I know. And so he's going to come over. I guess they're going to bring all the food and they're going to use our place to hold a dinner party. Wow. Well, it's and a gorgeous so I will place be, to do I, it. I will be off that Friday night because I don't want to, I don't want to miss the nuance of every moment of this dinner party. It'd be February 15th. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can do a Valentine's Day one before that, then you know. Yeah, yeah. Then bake off for the next day. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, no I, I pretty much. I, I I didn't really do anything on New Year's. I went to a couple of places in in my neighborhood, had a few beers, uh, got got bought a few beers, which was nice. And by about eleven, it's like, do I want to stay up? Nah. I came home. You're, you're keeping you know, the you could be keeping the beer industry things. and your kidneys afloat, aren't you? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, you know. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I didn't go out tonight, so you know, I may may have a couple of beers tomorrow. We'll see. But uh, well, the other night yeah. we were we were talking on this show about on the New Year's thing, little New Year's thing we did, uh, and there was just a couple of us here about what we expect is going to happen in the next year. You know. Yeah. And and. Um, uh, I read a thing. Dave Barry, you know who Dave Barry is the writer out of uh, mm-hmm. out of uh, yeah. Florida, Miami, Fl- Miami, who I got to meet once uh, because he he actually was a fan of mine, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I always have enjoyed his writing. It's always been very funny. I, I'm trying to remember some of the movies they made out of his writings. Uh, well, I have. I think I have all of his books of yeah. the collected yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, but know. but he wrote a whole thing about. Uh, you know, next year can't be as bad as this one. <laughs> well, he used to you do know. a year-end. He used to do a whole thing about the at, at this time of year. Go looking back, it was the longest article he would do for the Miami Herald or whatever. And it went, went through the all went through the the last year and sort of his his humorous take on what we what we saw in 2018. In this case, he may have done it, but because he does like occasional new things. Mostly, if you see them on anywhere on any, you know, on online or anything, it's usually a reruns because he's pretty much retired. Here's what briefly I'm just paraphrasing what he wrote. He said, we can summarize 12, 2018 in two words. It boofed. Now, we're mm-hmm. not 100 oh, percent. Sure. We're not 100 mm-hmm. percent sure what boofing is, despite the fact that this very issue was discussed in a hearing of the United States Judiciary yeah. Committee. We all mm-hmm. know for certain about boofing, that it's a distasteful and it's stupid. He said, in spades, what made the year so awful? We could list many factors, including natural disasters, man-made atrocities, the utter depravity of our national political discourse, and the loss of Aretha Franklin. Instead, we'll cite one event that, while minor, epitomizes 2018, and that's the debut of Dr. Pimple Popper. Oh, yes, I've seen ads for he that. He says, this is a cable TV show featuring high-definition, slow-mo, close-up videos of a California dermatologist performing seriously disgusting procedures on individuals with zits the size of mature cantaloupes. You might ask, <laughs> who on earth would voluntarily watch that? The answer in 2018 was millions of people. That is the state of our culture. We can only imagine what new reality shows lie ahead. We would not rule out Dr. Butt Wiper or people blow their noses onto camera lenses. Is there anything good we can say about 2018? Only this. 
it got it uh, got us out of 2017. <laughs> yeah. But that you know, I remember. I'm looking I remember. at the same thing. Yeah, that yeah. that's his year end. That's his year end review. Yeah. They're always great. Yeah, and and uh, you can of course read it online. But Dave Barry is mm -hmm. is brilliant. But you know, it's true. This was a this year sucked. My yeah. God, you know. <laughs> uh, it, it, Help me much, huh? I was gonna say I wasn't wasn't the best year for me though. I'm still oh, hanging yeah, in there, but just. Yeah. Just by thread, but you know somehow what, what, or another made it. It was a bad year, health wise or financially. Financially, well, I did have that one health thing for uh, about thirty six hours in March with the with uh, congestive heart failure. Oh well, that's, that's always I, I a good one to I, get. Yeah. Yeah, me and Penny Marshall here. No, no, Ooh. but uh, no, that was a, it was a fast. They had to slow down my my way too fast beating heart with electroshock. But I told you about that. It's only it only took him one little zap, and I was out anyway. So, yeah. and it works fine. I've been fine ever since. But, you know, I mean, I'm still much more monitored now by things, yeah. and I'm taking heart medication, and you know, I gotta watch myself more. I've lost, as you can tell, I've lost a decent amount of weight, I'm starting to get almost skinny. So it's uh, yeah. So we'll see. You know, in some ways, you know, health wise. Better, but yeah. yeah. Uh, Brian, Brian, yeah. Brian Ludwig has his hand up. Oh, Brian. Just saying, uh, I was just going to say, I remember in 2010, in like January or so, or early February 2010, Time Magazine released an article with the cover of a crying child on there uh, reading The Decade from Hell, indicating from, uh, well, 2000 even, but especially 2001, the 9 11 attacks, on up until that time. Uh, considering the uh, lower quality of life and lower standard of living that uh, younger Americans, but also everyone else, was looking forward to facing. And I'm just uh, wondering if they... Th I'm just thinking in the back of my mind, if they thought the last 10 years were bad, how best to sum up this these 10 years? <laughs> it seems to have gotten well, even you worse. Well, you the, know, the I, I think everything is relative. I keep telling girlfriends something that I think is, is something we have to remember here. She said, I can't remember when times were worse than right now. And I said, well, you also don't can't remember times when there was as much disposable media and news coverage as we have now. That um, uh, things look worse because uh, you've got 24-7 news operations that have to keep grinding away 24-7. And so they will pick on anything and just beat it into the ground and gin it up and make it seem almost worse than it is. They don't put it in proper perspective. I said, you have everybody with a, you know, it used to be that, you know, you took a picture and then you went down and you go into the one hour photo and had it developed. Now you've got yourself a, uh, a phone that can take pictures and you can put hundreds of thousands of pictures on that phone until it fills and up videos. completely and you can Live take videos. So people are taking pictures of everything that happens. I mean, I said to Jan Dan Rather once when I was interviewing him, I said, you know, times have really changed because do you realize that everywhere, somewhere on the planet, somebody is videotaping something. So every second of this decade is probably this, going to be on videotape somewhere. That's mm -hmm. funny you say that, Alex, because I just saw a meme on Facebook. I had to laugh. It said, in the future, this I guess, I guess this was made on, in Britain or something because it was graffiti on the wall. Somebody wrote on this. Uh, uh, in the future people will be uh, clamoring for their 15 minutes of privacy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Very exactly. good. Very good. Yeah, no, I mean, I, um, uh, uh, it, it, I, I, just, I just think that people have to realize that yeah, things, uh, when I think about things being bad, I've got to look back when I was a kid, okay? Mm -hmm. And let's look back at that. Um, mm -hmm. We had the McCarthy hearings. We had the House on American Activities subcommittee. We had all kinds of horrible things. We had we had people try you know, a, a baseball player out in the, at the in the Dodgers who was black trying to be a black player in baseball. You know, uh, and, and so when you want to think about when times were worse, they always were worse in some way. You know, uh, and and. Uh, 
Today, it's just magnified by all the media that's focused on it. Uh, certainly, we've never had a president as bad as this one. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't around for Millard Fillmore, but I don't think he was probably <laughs> as bad. Um, James Garfield yeah. got shot before we got to know him. You know, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I can't imagine a worse president than Donald Trump. But then a president never had the outlet for making insane comments like this president does or mm. like any president who would be around today would have at his disposal. I mean, Donald Trump all but invented the tweet. I mean, yes, it was invented by Paris Hilton. But, you know, uh, the fact <laughs> I was... I recall Twitter was on the verge of uh, before Donald Trump yeah. like gave it life yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he used a medium that had never been used before. Uh, and, and so we had him in our face 24-7. Yeah. And every morning when we woke up, we saw MSNBC or somebody like that saying, did you see what Donald Trump tweeted today? So when mm -hmm. you think things are worse, yeah, I guess they are, but they are exacerbated by the fact that we have all this media, we have all this, uh, all these outlets, all this social media going for us. So, um, but I'll tell you, when I was a kid and we went through the McCarthy era, geez, that was horrible. That was ugly. That was just absolutely, I think it was almost uglier than anything that's going on now. The commies in the woodshed, you know, yeah. they're all commies who are everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, people's lives were ruined by innuendo. Absolutely. It's kind of like the Me Too movement. Uh, you know. By the way. Yeah, there's a lot of parallels to be found. Well, I mean, that, that, that that's, that that's the only thing about the Me Too movement that bothered me about. It. I think that the spirit of it is very important, okay? But the using it as a method of... Uh, castigating someone and then not being able to have recourse uh, to explain themselves uh, is much like the McCarthy era where you got accused and there was no recourse. You were just, you didn't work anymore. But also in the you McCarthy know. era, you could go into a college campus and tell a few jokes and not have to worry about a bunch of uh, overzealous, uh, egoistic uh, students uh, trying to get your ass fired and uh, scored well, uh, off uh, let me give, I'll give you an example. Of somebody is a current thing that happened to Louis C.K. as you may have heard about, mm -hmm. in which um, he was doing a comedy act out in uh, Long Island at one o'clock in the morning. All right, and he did this uh, piece, which, quite frankly, you you know I would never do, uh, in which he made jokes about the fact about why do these kids down in Parkland High School Florida, yeah. get so important all of a sudden. I mean, what do they have to say? They suddenly, all they did was hide behind a fat guy. You know, that was his line. Now, yes, it was in bad taste. And yes, it was inappropriate. But it was one o'clock in the morning at a club out in Long Island where he was working out material. And I'm sure a lot of comedians would not be working today if the stuff they were working out at one o'clock in the morning made it to the news. Right. Uh, you know, because then you listen to it and you go, nah, I shouldn't do that again. That's not right. It doesn't fit and whatever. But, but today you have some guy with his phone, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. taping him recording doing him. this, recording this. And and Louis C.K. doesn't stop people from recording his shows. So That's this... funny they got down on Louis C.K., though, because I remember uh, just a few years ago uh, when we still had school shootings and mass shootings that were still rampant, uh, the comedian uh, Stug Stanhope, and he he's actually has some insight on this joke he was telling about the school about school shooting specifically, about how uh, the wrong, the person who uh, does the shooting you know, people never, at least to some extent, empathize with the with the kid because he's the one who, up until the point he snapped, was likely being called a faggot or an asshole or a dickhead by a bunch of the other kids and uh, marginalized by a bunch of the other students. And then finally, you know, the, the, the part that the media doesn't tell, the media outlets don't tell you is how, you know, uh, is how it, it led all the factors and ingredients that led up to the person snapping and finally going off on him. Well, yeah, but, but I could see where, where Louis C.K. probably was watching all this going on, looking at it through the view of uh, his prism, which is trying to find things in society that don't seem to make much sense. 
And I think he didn't find much sense in a bunch of kids who were involved in a tragedy suddenly having such a public voice. Now, I understand it, but that's just my, you know, my sensibilities. Um, but what the point was is that, for instance, uh, Dave Chappelle will not allow people to use their phones to videotape his, his stand-up for exactly that reason. That's fine, man. For exactly that reason, uh, and yeah. uh, good luck enforcing it. Yeah. So w what happened with Louis C.K. was he got caught up in the middle of what is today's media, you know. And what might have been done at one o'clock in the morning, testing out material, became uh, uh, just another nail in his comedic coffin. Um, and not that it was in good taste. I'm not going to stand up for him doing the piece, but I'm saying that I do know the comedians try out new material at one o'clock in the morning to see if they can get people to laugh at it and where the jokes lie and where they don't lie. And if they don't, yeah. then they don't use it. You yeah. don't use it. Uh, yes, uh, Tony. See, you know, so what does that really say? Like, 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 let's say, like you said, he, whatever he said, who really cares, right? Why do they seem like they're like railroading the guy? It's like, it's not like he's really meaning it like it's like it's an act why are they starting to stereo they just don't want him to have a career it looks like uh yeah I, I, I think that has a little bit to do with it you know um uh, it i think he made a bad choice in doing that i think he has I mean, to realize there's somebody taping you every minute you're on fucking stage even if uh, even if if it isn't somebody with his uh, camera out you know his phone out in the audience, it could be that the club is recording you, you know, uh, mm. because it's all but coming isn't off. Isn't what they're supposed to do, like in comedy, like take risks though to be well, funny? Well, that that's the other thing. In comedy, you do take risks, and sometimes those risks are are bad risks, you know, but. If it's one o'clock in the morning, nobody knows it happened. You just don't do it the next time. But do you have any thought about this, Tom? Because you have a, kind of a moral. Oh, we've been. I just. I'll just bring up what I always bring up. You know, and that is uh, Paul Craster had the had the best uh, take on it, and that is never make the victim the target of your humor. Yes. And yes. If you buy that, I mean, let's face it. Yeah. You know, the 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 the. Uh, the students at uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, uh, they are victims. Why did I call it Parkland? You're they, right, it was Marjorie Stoneman. I, uh, where's Parkland? Yeah, well, Parkland, Florida. Parkland, Florida. Yeah. Parkland is a city. It's in. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, yeah. but uh, I'd like to mention her name because she was a great environmentalist. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I'd like to mention her name because but, it was Marjorie, but go ahead. Anyway. Yeah, Marjorie, <laughs> yes, another great Marjorie. Yeah. Uh, but I would say that, uh, uh, you know, you know the, the the fact that you know they were they were victims, and I would not want to go through what they went through, and to make light of their situation, and especially there are parents, you know, who are also they've got dead ch children, and when they see this and hear this, I mean, I they have well, a right well, to be outraged. But the question is, what? Why did they see this, and why did they hear this? It wasn't like. Netflix did a special, and this was on the Netflix special. This was something that was done at 1 o'clock in the morning in a club in, in Long Island and probably never should have been heard, you know? Uh, you know. You get what I'm saying? In other words, it wasn't like it wasn't like he's going on television and then rubbing their nose in it, you know? I've intentionally not listened to it, um, but it's all over. I mean, the fact that I know it exists even though I haven't listened to it, I mean, I know a lot about it simply because people are talking about it. I hear you on the news okay. and, and, and such. Let's, so let, you can't let, avoid let, it. Okay, so let's take away from this picture here that this uh, recording never came out. That nobody ever, the guy who shot it didn't release it, didn't put it somewhere. And so it never made the light of day. Then would Louis C.K. have been hurting anybody? Or was the person who was hurting somebody the person who recorded it and then put it up online? Sort of like the tree in the forest. That yeah, well, it, it, it's yeah. a little more than the tree in the forest because you can. there's a little more of a literal thing here. I mean, it, given the media that we have today, if this were 
15 years ago, he would never would have gotten in trouble for that. Nobody w and, and nobody, by the way, would the victims would not have been hurt by the comments. You know what I I'm mean, saying? Yeah, I mean, you're right, Alex. It might have been in bad taste, but then a lot of these comedians 20 years ago, how many of their acts, they insulted everybody. Well, let, he would have nobody making anybody well, well, laugh. Let, let's talk about the, the motivation of the person who made the tape who then felt he should put it online. Was he not somewhat culpable in hurting those people? The right thing to do would be, and I'm not going to put it up because I don't want to insult, you know, for the victims. I would have just left it alone. I wouldn't even tape it. Do we know who it was that posted it online? Probably got paid for it. I mean, you, you generally well, sure think, sold it, yeah. you, you generally would like to think that a comedy act you see in a club is a perish, perishable object. That once the person does his act, that's the last time, the only time he's going to do it in exactly that way. And you've you been know, there to see it. So, not anymore. Not with the ubiquitous not nature anymore. of recording media. You know who got killed with that? Michael uh, Michael uh, Richards. Whole career yeah, ruined. Oh, yeah. ruined oh, yeah. because somebody was recording yeah. what he was saying, and what he was what was happening with him was he was flopping. The, the act was tanking, and he just started grasping at straws because he's not a very good stand-up, and he didn't know how to save the day. And and so he I mean he was the first one that was killed by uh, you know cameras mm -hmm. and phones. Yes. You know, uh, well, wait a minute. Yeah. Let, let me let me tell you. John had his hand oh, up first. Yeah. yeah, the Michael Richards thing actually. Uh, a good friend of mine is an actor and lives in my neighborhood. He, uh, this guy Jack was the uh, was the was the not a stunt double, but would be the body double whatever for Michael Richards during Seinfeld when they did local stuff. Yeah. He'd be the one who'd run down the streetway in the distance, whatever, because he looked enough like Richards. After, while the, around the time that this whole rant that Richards did happened, he was also uh, a member of a, of a group of, you know, like celebrity impersonators you could hire to go to your parties, yeah. and he said, "Well, I'm I'm screwed now." <laughs> no, nobody's ever. <laughs> it wasn't true though. He got hired to at least three or four more, more parties, jobs. and they were all and they were all parties hosted by black people. <laughs> they all wanted to have pictures with with Who's Kramer. You know, now they might have been doing this, but I mean, and he said, "Hey, you know," I mean, then then it disappeared because Richards himself sort of disappeared, but right. but it wasn't, you know. I think what that to make me also made me think that everybody just overreacted entirely to this guy just okay. here, saying, well, here, 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 here's yeah. also another yeah. interesting thing, another interesting factor in all of this. Uh, mm -hmm. The reports have it that it's so far. Oh, Good night, pal. okay. Thank you very much, oh. Mickey. I touched my watch by accident. Uh, 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 what was I going to say? Oh yeah, uh, Louis Louis C.K has not apologized for this incident, for this. Or should he? Well, let me finish. Why should he is exactly the question. The reason I don't think he is, is the last time he wound up getting into trouble, which was this whole thing about touching his penis or asking yeah. women, do you yeah. mind if I pull my penis out? He apologized and said, yes, it happened. And look what it got him. Yeah, yeah it's true. You know, you can't say I'm sorry anymore. Because then they go, see, he did do it. So you, it's getting to the point where why should you apologize? You're not going to do any better by not, by not apologizing than by apologizing. And in a perverted way, we know of somebody who almost never, if ever, apologizes. Yeah. And forgot him in the Oval Office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, do, do we, uh, shouldn't we start accepting some apologies from people when, they're, when they seem to be really legitimately contrite? Yes, Tom. I say, well, yeah. There's a difference between apology and and really, for people to express real remorse and actually to amend that. And I'm uh, trying to think of, um, oh yeah, yeah. Our the the uh, oh, I'm trying to remember whether uh, the last incident we had of of, of so, oh the guy was supposed to be. Um, Hosted the uh, Academy Awards. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, <laughs> oh, what, what? What's his name? Yeah. It, 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 what's his name? The yeah. short guy. Yeah, but anyway, oh, Kevin Hart. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin Hart. Hart. Yeah. He's an and and 
you know, I mean, really was, you know, if he was real, and as I said this before, I mean, he left the videos up. I mean, he could have at least taken the, the videos down. And so, so what, what was he sorry for? He says, I'm sorry I got caught. I don't know. I, I just don't, you know, I, I just don't get it. You know, if, if people are not really remorseful and they're not really doing stuff to actually show that they're trying to amend themselves. Well, you know, uh, th these things that happen with Kevin Hart, by the way, happened several years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, the and, and, and they had been uh, they had been addressed years ago and he apologized for them years ago and never and, and learned from his mistake and never went back to doing that kind of material again. Well, did he? I mean, he didn't take the I mean, always oh, the tweets. The he tweets. didn't take the tweets down. He just left them up there. Well, I don't know how you take a tweet down. So, you know, I mean, maybe just tweet. Maybe he that's why it. I never tweet. Tweets are forever. I deleted a tweet that's that uh, that uh, was causing somebody some problems. I didn't mean it. Yeah, but you but know what something that was pointed out to me. I says, "Oh, you're right," and so I took it down. But but, but he, I mean, he who, for all we know, I don't know did 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 Kevin Hart take them down or didn't he take them down or did somebody who, still have still copies of them? No, eventually did, but they were still up when when uh, when it was when they were discovered that they were still up. So. Yeah, but I mean the point is the point is like for instance Kevin uh, Kevin Hart uh, uh, sh sh should he have uh, been given such a bad time for what he did years ago? You know, what is the cutoff date on your bad yeah. taste? What is the cutoff date on hey I've grown beyond that? You know, and that uh, I'm trying to amend for what I did then by doing things more reasonably. Does that do I make sense here, Tom? Well, it, it would make sense, but I haven't seen. I mean, I, I haven't didn't see any evidence of it. I mean, obviously, I don't really follow him. I even forgot his name. I mean, so but I mean, I haven't seen any kind of action on his part to show any kind of re, you know. Some rehabilitation, as you could say. Well, there was a. But he's still working. There was a um, uh, uh, program director of a station in San Francisco who recently talked to a friend of mine and said, I've never forgiven Alex for coming after my radio station on his show or sending uh, Chuck Farnham over to do some kind of prank. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote the guy a note and I apologized. I said, You know, that was then, this is now in the. In the heat of competition, we do a lot of things later on we probably would not have done. Uh, and I think that's true of just about every action we take when we're younger. I think as we get older, we go, well, you know, if I had to do it over again, I probably wouldn't have done it exactly that way. You know? Uh, so, I mean, I, I, is it impossible to believe that a Kevin Hart, who is supposed to be a pretty nice guy, I mean, he's not considered an evil human being, uh, you know, as he's gotten older and had kids and had, you know, a few wives or whatever, uh, hasn't suddenly said to himself, you know, really, that was wrong of me. And I truly don't, uh, feel, you know, and it wasn't like he needed the Oscars so badly. You know, it only pays $35,000. Uh, oh, no, $15,000. Excuse me. It's even less oh. than that. It's $15,000. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I do it for the money, but why does exactly. why does Kevin Hart need to? Do it? So I think Kevin Hart got out of it just saying, "I don't need this." You know, I don't need the heat, and I don't need the ongoing comments about this. And I I believe the guy probably grew beyond it, and and probably never uh, used uh, homophobic jokes in his act again. I would imagine uh, he, there's been no record of it. You know, so. At what point do we say, okay, we accept your apology. You don't do it again. And if he does it again, then you nail him. What do you think, Charlie? No, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, if somebody really does apologize and really did take it out of, out of their act and didn't do it anymore, sure. Something happened years ago. I don't think you ought to nail him to the wall for it now. Yeah. Brian was absolutely right. Why the hell should uh, should Louis C.K. apologize? When he did apologize, it didn't get him very far. You know? Uh, and like I said, in a perverted way, 
Yeah. <laughs> Although it's, you know, it's true. And I'm not apologizing to the extreme. Got somebody elected to the president of the United States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, why is it we put up with all this bad behavior from our leader, but we don't put up with the, we don't allow that bad behavior from just anybody, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, when we're talking about people who have been accused of terrible things, Kevin Spacey, uh, Kevin Spacey has said right, that he doesn't want to. Yeah. Damn, he, we thought on the same. He, he doesn't want to show up for his trial. <laughs> it, he doesn't want to show up for his trial because he's too famous. Uh, uh, actually, what he was trying to say was is that he he feels that showing up to his trial is going to cause uh, more trouble than if he doesn't show up. Because well, he has of, to show up for because his trial, of, isn't he? It's no, right. no, I don't think you have to. Okay, then, then he, don't. You know, he did. He well, he he didn't want to show up for his arraignment. Uh, saying, "Go ahead, arraign me. I don't have to be there. My lawyers are there." And, right. I, and I can't remember whether he showed up or not. I think the judge said, yes, you have to show up. But he said, no, I'm not going to show up. Okay. Go ahead and arraign me. Um, he has... Kind of playing with fire, but if it's going to be allowed. They, they, they have a tendency to see what the defense is going to be. And I think on this one, Kevin Spacey might, might skate. Uh, it started that the kid was 18 years old. and oh, they, yes, Yes, he was drunk, but... Kevin Spacey supposedly didn't get him drunk. And uh, in uh, deposing the uh, the cops who were involved, uh, they started admitting that, you know, the kid was with him and they were doing stuff for about three minutes and the kid never said stop. <laughs> looks like It looks like to me, it sounds like to me that we've got a uh, twink gold digger on our well, hands. Well, no, I think what we've got here is somebody wanting to get Kevin Spacey because I'm sure he did terrible stuff in his time. He was not, the rumors I've heard about him are not stellar. Uh, oh, undoubtedly, uh, but, the, but, yeah, but, but they're trying to nail okay. him on something. And this is the only thing they could try to nail him on because the only thing that didn't fall within the statute of limitations and so on, you know, and they got yeah. a big dick and they want to fuck up on the ass with him. The prosecution does. I'm saying, yeah, yeah. They can't. And I, I love how the justice system works yeah. that way sometimes. But, and by know, that, I mean, it, I, if I you can't were to talk in the it. business, people, you know, Kevin Spacey is, you know, you can't feel sorry for him because really uh, he's not too well liked. He's supposed to have a lousy reputation as a human being. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. but and and so that's why you know a lot of times when you see these guys go to go the way of of all problems, it's because people don't like them. That's you know, right. uh, the reason why Weinstein is in as much trouble yeah. as he is because nobody was there to defend him; they all hated him. Uh, <laughs> same thing with Kevin <laughs> Spacey. Same thing with Bill Cosby was not a very pleasant human being either. I you know, like the fact of the kids too. Yeah, you know. I can't watch the cartoon no more ever since this whole. No, time. you can't. Why well, you can't watch? Uh, I have the whole box that yeah, sits on my shelf now. I can't watch. <laughs> oh, Bad Albert. Albert Saturday yeah. mornings, and I can't put it. On Even my... then, Alex, in his, in his younger years, he, he was an unpleasant, unpleasant person, Bill Cosby. Yeah, Is yeah. That... He was always supposed to be very unpleasant. You know. So. Yeah, it was like a le- lesson learned at the end of the cartoon. Well, there's the theme, and ah. you see, your 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 line did keep working, yeah. didn't it, Tom? Uh, it went dropped a couple of times. I had to yeah, reboot. Yeah, yeah. But oh, you rebooted? I didn't see you reboot. Well, I, 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 I went offline and went back online again. Oh, so. okay. Well, anyway, great to have you here, Tom. As always, okay. you're always the sci- This you're always the voice of morality. <laughs> yeah, he knows everything. And obituaries. I don't know how the two go yeah. hand in hand, but they yeah. do. Jeff Stein, great to see you again. Brian Ludwig, always fine to have you here. Glad you're not driving so that we can have you here. But I yeah. wish you were working for your sake. Uh, Charles Wallace, you know, one of the one of the joys lately has been that you're back with us on a fairly regular <laughs> yeah. basis, and we love My it. My life went to hell, so I can't just back. Your life oh. went to hell, and you're back here. Uh, Tony Magno, thank you. And, of course, John oh, Rockwell, I want to thank you as well. All of you, why don't you give a big uh, wave goodbye to the folks out there, and I'll wave back at you. And that's our uh, that's our that's our citizen panel. What the problem here? Wait a minute. Oh, there we go. All right. I push a button and it doesn't work. Uh, anyway, it's the story of my life. I push a button and it doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, that's it. Uh, that's our uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me get offline. I have to do all. I have to learn how to do all these things again that I, 
used to do all the time uh, because I'm off for a week and a half and I forget how to do them. Anyway, I do remember that next is the intersection with uh, Jack Bishop and tomorrow night at 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin and The Exchange. I'll be back tomorrow night, same time, same station in life at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.